Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a value-packed Chrome OS device from Asus. This is their CM30, and the price that you'll pay for this device with the keyboard, the tablet, and a garaged pen here at the top is less than what you would spend on a new entry-level iPad on its own without all the accessories. This is $300 as you see it, which is a pretty good deal. This is running Chrome OS, so you've got your Chrome browser here, of course, but you can also run Linux applications and boot up the Google Play Store for Android apps. And because it is a tablet, it feels very Android-like when you've got those Android apps running. So we're going to take a closer look at what you can do with one of these low-cost devices in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that I picked this up at a press event that Google was doing in New York for Chrome OS and its new features. And surprisingly, many members of the media who were there with me were not interested in this device, and I sure was. So this is on loan from Google, and when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one has compensated me for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. Now, the version we're looking at today has a MediaTek Companio 520 ARM processor that gives it some very good battery life. This one has four gigabytes of RAM, but there is an eight gigabyte version available. And on board for storage, we have 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, but there is a version with 128 gigabytes that you can get. The one that they lent me here does come bundled with the pen. There's apparently a lower cost version that does not have the pen, but it does have the keyboard and the kickstand here, so you can use it on the desk. The display looks pretty nice. As you can see, the bezels are quite large on this, so it does have a bit of a dated design, but if you're not paying all that much, some things get uh, sacrificed here, and in this case, it's the aesthetic. Uh, this it does, though, have a 10.5-inch WUXGA display that runs at 1920 by 1200, and it's relatively bright for what it is at 400 nits. The display quality, I think, is very nice on here. It's got a good color balance, and overall, I found it to be quite pleasant to look at, both for doing work and for reading. Now, the design, as you can see here, is very much like a Microsoft Surface device, and as such, it doesn't work as well on the lap as you're typing. The keyboard feels pretty nice insofar as it being rigid and responsive, but it's just hard to get this thing all balanced on the lap properly. As for the keyboard, the keys are a little smaller than I would like. They're chiclet style but they have good travel to them. They have about 1.5 millimeters of travel because the keyboard case is a little thicker here than I've seen on some of these other similar tablet devices. And as such, the tactile feedback here doesn't make typing as bad as I thought it would be uh, with this size of a key. However, if you have big fingers, you may struggle on this keyboard a little bit because it is not a full-size one. Also, the keyboard is not backlit. The trackpad, though, is very nice. It's got a very nice, firm click to it. It tracks quite accurately, and I was very pleased with its overall performance as I've been playing around with the device here. Now, this does mimic the Microsoft Surface kind of design here. So when you are in a Chromebook and you have multiple windows opened here, when you detach the keyboard, it will switch into its tablet mode, which brings everything full screen, and then you can uh, flip out of different apps or flip up from the top to go between them. So it does take a little bit of getting used to when you get uh, one of these Chrome tablets out because they do have their own little quirks and nuances. But once you get everything figured out here, it does make a lot of sense and is very easy to use. This is a magnetic attaching keyboard here. So when it gets close, it locks in. And once that happens, you go back to its PC mode here and it behaves more like a personal computer does. Now you can detach the keyboard and you can also, on the back here, detach the kickstand and then you've got a nice uh, tablet here with a metal backing and a relatively nice design. On its own, the tablet weighs just under two pounds, 1.92 pounds to be exact, or 0.87 kilograms. And then when you've got everything put together here with the keyboard attached, it weighs 2.47 pounds or 1.12 kilograms. There is an issue, though, in that the keyboard slips around quite a bit on the display. It would have been nice if they had some kind of magnet or something to secure it a little better. So as such, it'll always feel like it's slipping out of your hand when you're carrying it like a folio. Uh, but otherwise, the build quality on here is pretty nice. 
Uh, there is no biometric option for getting into it quickly, so you have to type in your PIN code or your password uh, after you lock the machine up. It does have a webcam here at the top, and you can see what the image looks like here. It does shoot 1080p video, but you'll find the angle a bit challenging, uh, even when you have the kickstand propped up at its highest point. So there will be a lot of extra headroom unless you prop the entire unit up a bit. There's also a similar resolution camera here on the back. Nothing exciting here. It can take pictures. They don't look all that great. And the output visual quality for video is pretty much the same as the front camera, but it's nice to have a rear camera if you might need it for something. There's not much for ports on here. In fact, there's only two ports. You got a headphone microphone jack here, and then you have a full service USB type C port. This is what you use to charge the tablet but it also supports data devices and video output. So if you plug a docking station in, you can use this like a desktop. The only downside is that the maximum output for video is 1080p, not 4K. But if you've got a low cost 1080p display laying around, you can plug it into that and hook up a keyboard to a docking station and you are good to go uh, with this tablet operating in desktop mode. Now it does have stereo speakers on board, but they are only oriented to the landscape orientation here. So you've got a speaker here on the left and right. When you flip it into portrait mode, those speakers keep working like they do in landscape mode. However, they are now on the top and bottom. So you don't get stereo in both situations there. It sounds okay. It's a bit on the tinny side, so don't expect much out of the speakers, especially for music, but they're loud enough for spoken word podcasts and conference calls and that sort of thing. And that is pretty much it for the feature set on this device. It is pretty bare bones and basic, but it gets the job done. Battery life, because of the ARM processor on here, is very good. Depending on what you're doing, you should be able to get 10 to 12 hours of usage out of it. Uh, when you are out and about. If you're playing games or something that's more intensive, that will reduce the battery life a bit. But if you stick to the basics and keep the display brightness down, you can go a very long time on this tablet, very similar to other tablets that look like this one. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, let's start things off with a visit to the nasa.gov homepage. We'll boot up the Chrome browser here and see how things perform. As you can see, it very quickly renders everything in on screen here. And it's not bad for a little ARM chip with only four gigs of RAM. It also has Wi-Fi 6 on board, so you should get a decent performance out of its networking hardware here as well. So all good on that front. Now we also booted up YouTube to see how it handles 60 frames per second video. It is struggling a little bit with that here. So I've got a 1080p 60 video from my YouTube channel playing right now and I'm dropping a frame every second or two. It's not all that noticeable, but the stats for nerds here doesn't lie. This doesn't seem to perform as well with video playback as some of the similarly priced Intel-based Chromebooks do, but I'm not noticing it in the playback itself, but you might if you are sensitive to those sorts of things, so just be aware of that. One other note that I like to remind people about when we're talking about video playback on these things is that when you boot up the Chromebook, you have the option to watch Netflix, for example, on the web browser or through its Android app. If you watch it on the Android app, you're not going to get the full performance out of the display here. So this is essentially a 1080p display, but the Android DRM level on this device and all other Chromebooks that I've looked at doesn't allow for high definition playback. So if you want the best visual quality watch your favorite video services through the browser and not through the apps. And on version 2.0 of the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 51.2, and that puts this little Chromebook in a very similar position as some of the lower cost Intel devices we've looked at over the last year or two. So it performs about where I would expect for its price point. So let's take a look now and see how the pen performs on this. The pen will work when the keyboard is attached, but I have just detached it for convenience here. Now, as I mentioned, the uh, pen will garage itself here at the top, and it also charges itself in its garage there. And when you pull the pen out, you'll get some of the built-in Chrome functions that you can do with the pen. One of the things that I like about Chrome OS quite a bit is that you can use the pen 
when you are in any text field. So I can write in NASA here and it will actually recognize my handwriting and use the pen as a keyboard, which is pretty cool. Another neat little feature here is that they have a magnifying glass feature that will allow you to magnify a section of the screen. This could be really helpful if you're doing a presentation and you're mirroring the display. You can just use your pen to zoom in on things that you'd like the audience to pay attention to. Additionally, you can use it as a laser pointer here to annoy your pets. And then, of course, you've got a built-in note-taking function here, which will pull up a note-taking app and you can start writing. The pen seems to work pretty nicely. It doesn't feel as nice as the Apple Pencil does, of course, but it does uh, ignore my wrist input as I am writing on the screen here. The screen is rather slippery, so it's not going to give you that pen to paper feel, um, but it does have very minimal latency here and allows you to take notes very efficiently or do some doodles or that sort of thing. And the pen also is pressure sensitive, so if you have an app that allows you to adjust the pressure of your pen, it should work well with that. Now, as I mentioned, Chromebooks are compatible with Android apps. And one of the nice things about this particular Chromebook is that because it's running with an ARM processor, it doesn't have as many compatibility issues with games that I found some of the Intel devices struggle with. So you should have a good time playing some of the games you've grown accustomed to. And because this works as a tablet, it's very compatible with touchscreen games like this one. There is a new feature coming to Android that wasn't available at the time that I recorded this video that will actually allow you to map touch commands to game controllers or keyboards. And when that feature is available, I will show that to you in an upcoming video. But overall, Android compatibility seems to be fine here. I did not find anything that did not run well on this hardware. And most games like this one target lower end hardware like this. Now, Chromebooks are also very good for game streaming. And this one seems to be doing pretty well too with its Wi-Fi 6 on board. I am currently playing Starfield from my Xbox Cloud Gaming account. And as you can see here, it runs pretty nicely and my Xbox controller paired up and works just fine with it too. So if you are uh, looking to stream games in your home or through a cloud service, this should do pretty well at that. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Gaming Benchmark Test, we got a score of 727. That puts this one on the lower end of things when it comes to overall graphics performance. So while this is fine for casual Android games, some of the more demanding Android games will certainly struggle on this hardware versus something like a newer Intel N100 processor that does have better graphics performance on board. But still, for a lot of the games that I think most people would run, this is adequate for its price point. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux compatibility. One of the cool things about Chrome OS is that you can install the Linux development environment through the settings and once you have that installed you have access to all of your command line applications like nano i can boot up gopher here and browse the web like it's 1994 again very cool stuff you can play around with but it also allows you to install graphical applications and when you do they kind of just live with all the other stuff that you can run on your chromebook here so for example my favorite app to install on chromebooks is libre office which is a great free open source office suite that has a spreadsheet, a word processor, and a few other applications. And it runs pretty nicely here, a little on the sluggish side maybe, and that might be due to the fact that we only have four gigs of RAM on this unit, but it does function well enough to get some basic work done here. And what I love about Chrome tablets is that you get the Android tablet experience but you also get this computer experience that allows you to pretty much install anything. And if you are looking to get into coding, this is a great device for that too, because you could run Python on here and do whatever you want through the command prompt. So it's a great way to learn Linux, and it's also just a very convenient device to use. And one of the things that always bugs me about the iPads is that they're running with the same chips that you see on the MacBooks, but you can't run Mac OS. Here, you just dock it with a keyboard, and suddenly this tablet turns into a PC that you can do whatever you want with. And I think it's really cool. So uh, if you are in the market for a tablet, you should definitely consider a Chrome OS tablet just because you have so much flexibility with what you can do on it. And this one for the price point, I think is very, very reasonable and packed with a good amount of value. So that's gonna do it for this look at the Asus Chromebook CM30. 
if you're looking for something useful that doesn't break the bank, this is definitely something to consider. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.